The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. How did everybody enjoy the worship this morning? Wow. I think it's just a it's just a taste of what <clears throat> you could turn me down a little. Yeah, there you go. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Um, I think that worship this morning was just a little taste of what what God has in store for us uh, in the coming days and months. And um, I'm excited. Uh, <laughs> this is actually the first the, one of the first messages that I that I had, I, and I started a um, couple couple weeks ago. I, I I had gotten the flu really bad, and I I got 102 temperature, and I was kind of out of it. And um, but I I wanted to utilize the time that I had, especially with um, not being able to eat. I was kind of I was like I'm just going to give this to the Lord as a fast, and um, and pray it through, and see if I could get this thing kicked quicker than uh, you know than what the what's common for three or four days or whatever. Anyway, while I was doing that, I got I, I was so I was so blessed that I started I just started asking questions, um, innocent questions, things that I knew the answers to pretty much already because of uh, just going through Bible school and reading your Bible and things you you know these things. But I felt I've, I want to I want to see where they are in Scripture. I want to make sure I just want to make sure and see what's going on. So I asked the Lord, I was like, you know, why, why, why is there sickness? Why is there disease? Why are people dying all over the place? And how come we don't see the miracles that we, you know, that Jesus has performed on, when, on his earth walk and, and more frequently? I mean, we do, there's a, there, there's a select few people that really walk in these things, um, but it just seems like it's a select few. And how come we don't see it more in the United States? And we, we look at people that are missionaries and they get thousands and thousands of uh, people saved, delivered, um, healed. Uh, amazing miracles happen. But in the United States, what, what the heck's going on here? So, um, and those are, I felt like that, that was, those were legitimate questions, you know. Um, and the response I got was kind of strange. Um, almost, I'm going to, pretty much lay it out the way that the Lord spoke it to me and see if you guys can follow. Maybe you guys can, can get a grasp on this. I already have it. I got it. I know what, I know what the Lord is speaking, but maybe you can, you can pick it up while I'm, I'm putting it down. He, he, he showed me four different things. He said, first, first of all, he's like, he took me to the Lord's prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Everybody knows this prayer. It was the instruction to Jesus, how you know, from Jesus on how to pray. I was like, okay, so I wrote it down. I was like, I'm not sure where we're going with this, but all right. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna meditate on that for a while. And then he brought me to where he was sending out the the twelve disciples in Matthew 10. And it says, uh, and when he called the twelve disciples to him. He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And then he directed them in verse 7 and 8 of Matthew 10, Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. So, okay, so those are the first two things he gave me. Excuse me, I'm a little dry. I still don't quite know what's going on. So then about the third day in, these are all daily. These are the specific things that the Lord gave to me when, in my prayer time. The third thing, he said, I want you to study the second chapter of Acts. And everybody knows the second chapter of Acts is the day of, you know, it's the, the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell on the 120 in the upper room. 
say, okay. And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Okay. Usually you need more than, more than two points to create a, a line exactly where, where it's going to actually be headed. This is my third point, and I still don't know exactly where God's taken me here. But you know my original questions. How come, you know, why, why aren't we seeing this in the United States? Why aren't we seeing this more often? So he gave me... The following day, he told me to look up the story of Stephen. And I'm like, okay, I have no, I have no understanding where you're taking me. <laughs> I even called my dad and I was like, I don't know these points. I don't understand what, what he's trying to show me here. The story of Stephen, of course, it's... He was one of the seven deacons that were called to um, basically help the widows that were being overlooked. Um, the, the disciples really didn't have the time. They wanted to pursue more ministerial type, uh, more in the Word and teaching and, and stuff. And there were some people that were being neglected, and they needed the seven deacons in the Church of Jerusalem to be able to take care of those needs. And so Stephen was one that was chosen out of the seven, just an ordinary guy. But it says in the, in the scriptures that he performed miracles and signs and wonders and all these things. His wisdom was without refute. You couldn't, you couldn't come against his wisdom. It was from the Lord. He was full of power and the Holy Ghost. I said, okay. He's also what's called a proto-martyr. It sounds really strange, but he was the first martyr for Christ that we, have, that we read about in the scriptures. Proto-martyr sounds like a, some type of scientific protoplasm, you know, that kind of stuff. But he was the first. I said, okay, well, I mean, most people know these stories and how his face shone and he saw the heavens open up and while he was being stoned. And so let's, I, I said, let, you know, okay, let's start there because I felt the Holy Spirit on that, that, that fourth point. In chapter 6, I believe it's, it's Acts as well. Um, chapter 6. Now in those days when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists. Uh, now the Hellenists were the Greek-speaking Jews at the time. Because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve, the twelve, they summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It's not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we, who, we, who we may appoint over the business, this business of waiting tables. But we will give ourselves continuously prayer in the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, the proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, all, these, all seven of these guys, and they prayed for them, they laid hands on them. Then the word of, the word of God spread, and the, the, the number of disciples multiplied greatly. A great many of the priests were obedient to the faith, and then Stephen, of course, Stephen was accused of blasphemy. There was a, that was the only way that they could get him. They couldn't refute his wisdom in the synagogues when he was teaching. So they basically had to lie and, and say that he was blasphemic. That they heard, they overheard so-and-so said they heard such and such that he was, being, he was speaking blasphemies against God. Stephen, full of faith, faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Here's this waiter waiting tables chosen. He's just, a, he's just a, an ordinary fellow that had faith that was going, you know, serving in his church in Jerusalem. But yet it says he was full of faith and power and did great wonders and signs among the people. And then there arose from uh, what is called the synagogue of the freedom, uh, disputing with Stephen. 
and they were not able to resist the wisdom by the Spirit which he spoke. They cast him out of the city, and witnesses laid, laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. How beautiful. It reminds me of David. I believe it's in Psalm 35, verse 11. David, David says about his persecutors and the people that were, were, were speaking poorly of him and treating him horribly and setting traps for him. He said, I prayed for you just like you were my friend, just like you were family. I wept, I weep for you even now, just like a mother or a, a, a son or daughter that lost his mother. How much in, in the heart of Jesus is this? I mean, this is like so incredible to be able to be able to speak like this about your enemies, the people that want you dead, the people that want to hurt you. And it's the same as what we see here in Stephen. And it's also a reflection. Stephen, I mean, Lord, not char- do not charge them with this sin, he says. Doesn't that remind you of something else that just happened, you know, 2,000 years ago? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He had a revelation of of the Son of God. He had the Holy Spirit in him so much that even while they were killing him and he knew he was on his way to heaven, he said, don't let them, don't hold this against them. (laughs) I want that so bad for myself. You know, we should want that. We should desire that amount of Holy Spirit that deep to where you have opposition and instead of reacting and and screaming profanities and getting back in their face, not even seeing that at all, like staring right through them and seeing what God is seeing. A lost, you know, a lost generation, a lost person in front of you with Amazing compassion. A couple of other things that I thought was interesting, and in, in they, lo- they lost where they buried him. They, they laid him at the bottom of a mountain, thinking that the dogs would, would tear him up and eat him for a couple of days. And the story, as the story goes, they, uh, some other Christian folks that were actually, that used to listen to him in the synagogues, um, went and buried him. And it wasn't until 514 AD that he was found, which it was lost for hundreds of years where his burial site was. And a a, a Christian priest had a vision three times of the location of where he was buried, and they went and they found him there, which I thought was really neat. And while they were digging him up, he he, he had a bunch of different relics that they're, you know, uh, just different pieces of clothing and different things that were customary to be buried with. And as they're pulling out all these relics and, and bringing them um, to the church, they, people were getting instantly healed from certain diseases and things. Boom, you know. I just thought that was fascinating. This is something that's not in the scriptures, but I was just reading through a little bit of history. Anyway, so what is the Lord speaking to me? I really felt it on, on Stephen. I was like, wow, this is... Because I, I generally feel compassion. I know when the Holy Spirit is moving on people with compassion. I, I feel that. I feel when there's, there's things going on in the atmosphere. I feel when I sit down and pray with somebody, I can, I, I can feel what's going on inside them. Even if it's just the tip of the iceberg, like what, what my dad always says, but I can feel it. And when I, you know, and there, there are some of us that, that, that can do that, and it, we're moved by the compassion that we feel through Christ. And so that's, it's not like we're, we're not sympathizing, but we, we know. It's like God knows. But I've never felt power. I feel moved by compassion 
thrilled when I'm able to be able to be with somebody and, and see a miraculous transformation because that's what we see in this church. Transformation. When somebody goes from fear, or anger, or disgust, or guilt, and, and, and pray through a couple of things and watch a smile come up on their face and have that joy come up from, underneath, from inside there, that's transformation, right? There's nothing like that. That is so awesome. But what, what is he trying to speak to me here through this? I mean, he showed me, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He showed me how to pray. This is how he told them how to pray. So I'm going back through these four points after I go through some of the study of Stephen that I just shared. And what sticks out? In every single situation, in every single point, he's talking about kingdom. Our, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. So then we look at my second, my second point was when he called the disciples. What did he say? He said, go announced to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. What happened at Pentecost? Well, first of all, the, the, the disciples went out announcing that the kingdom of heaven was here, but they were healing the sick, raising the dead. What were they doing? They were, in essence, revealing kingdom. Second chapter of Acts, what happened? Kingdom of God is in us. It's not just near now. It's not just with us and among us. It is in us. The Holy Spirit in power. Right? I'm, I'm getting this now. You know, this is how the Lord was revealing it to me. And, and I don't want to make, you know, bore you to death, but I'm, I'm hoping that we can, you can see how it unfolds. I said, that's okay, okay, but that was, that was the disciples, and that was for them at that time, and, you know, and maybe a select few of the believers and, and everything um, that we see nowadays. And then he showed me again the story of Stephen, common every, everyday fella, waiting tables. But he was full of faith and power, did wonders and miracles and signs. He, he expanded and, and pushed the kingdom. Thousands of people. And um, um, he touched thousands of people. Unbelievable, one person. And I'm like, okay, so this is for the everyday Joe. I, I took him at his word. I didn't want any more examples, but there are. So he's speaking kingdom. What do we know about kingdom now? So I wanted to do a study on kingdom. What do we know? Luke 12, 32. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It's his good pleasure to give it to us. So if we don't have it, we receive it. And it's his pleasure to give it to us. It's awesome. Luke 17, 20. Now when he was asked by the Pharisee when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here. See here, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Now that was a futuristic teaching that, that Jesus was saying. He was saying, They will say, See here. They won't say, See here. It's like, you know what I mean? This is, he's speaking of Pentecost after Pentecost. Okay, the kingdom of God is going to be in me. Acts 1, verse 7 and 8. And he said to them, It's not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Power for what purpose? He's talking about the coming of the Holy Spirit when, um, and receiving the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. 
Power for what purpose? The power that was given for them was to further the kingdom. Amen? It was to hit multitudes of people so that they would speak to multitudes of people and share and heal the sick and raise the dead and proclaim kingdom. And thousands upon thousands, it wasn't just people were, were added, like, like Jesus says, there were so many added to his group, so many added. After the day of Pentecost, people, they multiplied. It, they had to, because those 12 disciples couldn't reach everybody in the whole planet. Jesus himself had to go so that we could know about the gospel, so that we would have a relationship with the Lord restored. Okay, so he's still speaking kingdom. I, I knew it. The same power that he gave the, the disciples to go and heal the sick, raise the dead, he gave to us so that we could declare the kingdom <laughs> is here. 1 Corinthians 4.20 says, The kingdom of God is not just talking, it's by living by God's power, the power he gave us through the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. There goes the emotion caboose again. It's funny, though, because we, 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 we brought that up a few times now, and they have that John Piper's little explanation about why we do need the, the emotions. But the God emotions, righteousness, which or, or goodness, or under the new covenant is, is love and action, peace and joy. Those are, all, those are all emotions. And what is it? It's the kingdom. And what does Matthew 6.33 say? So much for putting it in a caboose. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Seek first. So we're sticking these emotions on the, on the caboose and saying we're not needing them, but it says right there, seek the kingdom first. Yes. And what is the kingdom? Yes. Righteousness, peace, and joy. And again, his righteousness. I, got, I, I was getting so excited when I, was, when I was taking my notes. I was like, I get it. Thank you. I get it. So what was the Lord speaking in all of this? The disciples were to declare kingdom. God's will was to be done on earth as it is in heaven. If there was a condition in a person's life that was not congruent with heaven's standard, it was to change. People in heaven are not tormented by demons. People in heaven are not sick. People in heaven are not hungry. People in heaven don't have leprosy or any other diseases. The power, the same power the disciples had received was to change what was contrary on earth into heaven. What? <laughs> how, come, how, come, how can we miss this? I haven't even seen this before. They are actually, we are actually, because the kingdom of God is within us now, we are responsible for that power. We have that power. We need to get out of the way and let it go. I felt bad this morning, and I do apologize, because there was a little bit of my flesh in the way before I started speaking because of, because of the, the setting up of the, all the, the sound booth and, and all these things got preoccupied by different things that happened. The live streaming box stopped working. That We couldn't get this, this speaker over here to work at all. You know, there's all these normal things that happen in your day-to-day -day, in your day-to-day -day time, but we don't have to lose that peace. And I do apologize. I did a little. I, I I let it get to me a little bit. But this is what God is saying: We have the power; it is in us. The Holy Spirit, your experience with Him needs to change. It needs to change. We don't want to go day by day anymore without experiencing 
His presence, His power, His power to, is not just to save, but to heal the sick, to raise the dead. To, there's miracles and wonders that are, that are in us to promote the kingdom, and we're not doing anything with it. Why? The power of the Holy Spirit to bring kingdom life to earth. And that's what they did. They went forth and drove out demons. They healed in all manners of sickness. They fed and clothed the poor and even raised the dead. The only, the only thing that they didn't do is when, when Jesus spoke to them and said, you give them something to eat. They were, they were baffled. They took, they took all of their uh, facts and figures and said, there's no way we have enough to be able to feed these people. It would take a small fortune to feed these, these folks. And so then, what happened? Even though they were given the power to actually do that, because Jesus wouldn't have told them to do that without giving them the power to do it, Jesus saw that they, they were not believing and did it himself and broke the bread and the fish twice. And I think, I'll, I'll get into it later, but I believe that in the coming days and months, that when we actually grasp the immense awesomeness of this, just this small revelation about the Holy Spirit and the power in us that, that He's given us kingdom, that these things are even going to change in our lives. I think not only are we going to see the, the signs and the wonders and the, and the miracles and things, he said even more we would be able to do, right? He said, I think we're going to be able to manage as believers. I think that we're going to have supernatural provision. I think that we're going to not only just see signs, wonders, miracles, and more raising of the dead and, and healing the sick and things, but we're also going to be able to look at our finances and see it multiplied. Yes. And we're going to see our food and things that we are in need of multiplied for the ministry even to further the kingdom. Yes. I, don't want to, I don't want to sit and, and, and look at, at finances and say, you know, Lord, where, how am I going to even do anything today? Yeah. Or how am I going to feed my family? Or how, I don't think it's going to happen anymore. I think once we get this revelation in our hearts and we're able to spread get out of the way yes. and allow the kingdom to go forward, I think that we're not going to see that. I think we're going to see amazing things in the future here. Like I said, what, what, does it, what did that have to do with Stephen? I said, he was just an ordinary believer who waited on tables. And, and so that's his, his revelation to me was, it's for, it's for all of us. It's amazing this restaurant worker was being stoned, yet he had the grace to forgive his murderers freely. He was able to do this because, why? There's no unforgiveness in the kingdom. And the kingdom is in him. I want this revelation. I want this to be reality. I want this to be reality for everybody in here. I want this to be reality for every believer. In Mark chapter 16, starting with verse 15, he said to them, go throughout the world and preach the gospel to all people. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. Believers will be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons in my name. They will speak in strange tongues. If they pick up snakes and drink poison, they will not be harmed. They will place their hands on the sick people and they will get well. It doesn't say this is just for apostles. It doesn't say that this is for just for Joe Heavy Speaker, whoever it is. This is all believers will be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons. This is for you. Right. 
So what can we conclude from this? The kingdom is now in the hearts of men and women here. Everybody that's born again and filled with the Spirit, the kingdom is in us. That was manifested even in Jesus' walk. He gives us the grace and the power to be able to, to walk like that. Let's, try, let's, let's begin to utilize it. Let's get ourselves out of the way. I said, Lord, what, what exactly? You still haven't really answered my question. I understand this, and this is an awesome revelation, Lord, but you didn't answer my question. Why? How come this isn't happening now already? He spoke to me th throughout all these different, all these notes. He was speaking to me the answer and some of the things that he wants to see. In order for us to be able to do this, to be the way that he wants us to be, the way that we're created to be, to further the kingdom, especially now in this dark time. He wants us to advance the kingdom. He's given us the power and the tools necessary, but he said one thing. He said first, right now, and it started already, a deep cleansing is going to be taking place. And you think, and I, and I thought that term, I was like, deep cleansing sounds really scary, Lord. <laughs> I don't know about that. But when he, he was explaining it, what it is is he, he is... He's given a, a, he's given, there's right now even, the Lord's given a special grace to be able to deal with some of the things that we've had the hardest times dealing with. Some of the things that we keep hidden from ourselves, from trying to hide it from the Lord and from others. Those things that, you know, that we're not, they don't, we don't have full integrity on. You know, what integrity is when, you know, you are what you, you, you do in, in private, right? That's integrity. You are who you are in the private place. But he's giving us, he's going to, he, he will allow, if you allow him to, he will drudge some of this stuff up so it can be dealt with. Whether it's hidden from you. What did, what did, what did David pray? He said, search me, O Lord, for any secret thoughts, any hurtful ways in me. Any, any things that were hidden in me that I don't even know about that are uh, contrary to kingdom, deal with them. That was the first thing he told me. And there's, going to be a, there's already a special grace. He's going to be popping up stuff in your hearts that, that I, don't, you know, I don't care what it is. If it's not kingdom, righteousness, peace, or joy then it isn't supposed to be there. If you have a pornography addiction, if you have anything else like that is hidden, that you don't want to keep hidden, it, the time is now to deal with it, folks. If you want to be able to walk in power, if you want to be able to advance the kingdom for Him, you got to deal with your stuff. Amen. Right? Amen. And the time is now. He's given a special grace, just like He said. The time is now to deal with this stuff. That was just one example. I don't know how many are out there. Number two, doubt needs to be demolished. Not just doubt that you can't be healed or healings aren't for today or you're not going to get that word that was promised or not just doubt for, for, for thinking that the outcome isn't going to work out for you. Doubt in the word of God. And not just doubt in the Word of God, doubt in who the Word of God is. It sounded simple to me. I, I believe every single word, every single letter that isn't, that's printed in my scriptures, I don't ever want to have any doubt. Doubt about who He says He is in the scriptures. I did a whole message on who our God is a couple months ago. 
Who does he say he is? If you have any doubt that, you, that he isn't who he says he is in the scriptures, then we have a problem. There's, that's an area of your life that needs yielded. He says, I am able, I am love, I am good, I am among you in your midst, I am truth and true, I'm your healer, I am for you, I am merciful, I'm not, and then the list goes on. I'm wiser than men, and I'm faithful. I'm the author of peace. I'm your sufficiency. These are all scriptures, folks. I'm working in you. I like that one, Philippians 2.13. It's one of the best things that, we, that I learned over the years is that Christ in you is doing the work. It's his, it's his, he's, he's doing the work. He's not a man that he should lie. He's with us in battle. He's our rock and our refuge. The list goes on. You could do a a huge word study on just the I am's in the Bible. But if you have any problem with any of those, you need to deal with them now. What God is going to be given to his people in the future days here to come is very, very necessary for you to deal with some of this stuff. No doubt. You can have no doubt. You have to have childlike faith. The third thing he said, and it goes along with no, having no doubt, the, fir- the third thing that he requests from us is to only believe. That's really the opposite of having doubt. In Mark, there's a, there's a story of a, of a young, uh, of a, uh, a ruler of a synagogue whose, whose daughter had, had died. And they went to Jesus and they, they said to the, the, the ruler of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. Jesus said, do not fear, only believe. When he heard the news of this, the, this guy's daughter was, was dead. And I, I, read, I looked at that verse and I was like, only believe. That's, that's all it took. So he went in and, you know, the, the story, basically he went in and he said, that, oh, she's only sleeping. This is after people ridiculed him. He still went in and said, oh, no, you know, everybody was like, oh, she's dead, she's dead. He went in and he's like, whatever. Raised her from the dead, told, her, told him to give her something to eat. And she sprung up on her feet. She was 12 years old and probably danced a jig for all I know. <laughs> I would. And it was, it was his faith that, that, that did this. It was just believing. He, simple, real simple. Only believe, just like a child. I don't care what your circumstances look like. It doesn't matter. Just believe God. It sounds really difficult, and, and, and you know, I don't, I don't want to be like religious, like you need to do this, you need to do that, but th- this is what the Lord was asking. To set aside all your facts and figures, the, the things that people tell you, the things that you, you know, you know the results, two plus two equals four. And he wants to just set that to the side. And I want to, I want to see... You know, I want to see multiplication instead of adding. I want, to, I want to see the expansion of the kingdom. When we yield to Christ in us and allow kingdom to come forth in power. There is this, there's this, when I was reading through these things and the Lord gave me those four points, he told me to go ahead and order this book. And I was like, okay, fine. I don't know if you know, how many people know who Smith Wigglesworth is? Okay. More, you guys more, know more than I do then. But anyway, the Lord told me to order this book by Smith Wigglesworth. And in the first eight pages, he went from the Lord's Prayer to the sending out of the disciples to... to the, the Pentecost, to the story of Stephen. 
and this is already after I have all the, my notes already done. Wow. Scribbled, of course, I, I, hardly legible. But I, I had this all in there from when I was sick, and I didn't get that until, you know, after. I was like, how awesome is the Lord just even... I knew it was God because I could feel it. You know, I could feel it in my prayer time. This is the Lord speaking. I don't know what it is, means, but I could feel it. <laughs> and to have that even as a... As a you know, another witness as to what, what the Lord was speaking. I just thought that was amazing. And then I, and then I saw like two other people that I, that I, I look up to in the faith um, posted on, on social media that they had the same book and they were posting quotes from it. And I'm like, and this is like within a day of me having actually got the book in my hands. I was like, this is, this is so awesome. But I feel if we have, if we do the necessary prep work, which he's going to help us do, it's, a, it's, it's his job to do the work if we allow him. If we do the necessary prep work and allowing him to do it, <laughs> I guess you could say, the, the glory is going to come and we're going to see some stuff that we've never seen. And it's going to be powerful. And we're going to be able to further advance the kingdom because there's so much dark going on there's so many things that the people are actually preaching and teaching that is complete garbage and if we don't know the difference if we don't have the holy spirit in us to tell us hey that ain't me um we're not gonna, we're gonna we're gonna get lost and i don't want any i don't want anybody in here lost um Actually, one of the one of the things that that Smith Wigglesworth said in one of the, the chapters that I read, he quote I'll, I'll quote him. He says, "Beloved, if there's any but in your attitude towards the word of truth, you have not yielded something to the Spirit." It's true. If you have any if and ors or buts about what you read in the scriptures, you have, you have something that you need to deal with. And actually reading through, reading through some of his things, there's such a, he knew the Holy Spirit in a way that there, very few people did. And from what I understand, he brought kingdom with him when he, go, he went places. I, I desire that. Don't you? When you're going through your day-to-day -day life, your, your routine, your, your, your grocery shopping, some people, honestly, some people in here have already experienced this, where people just start crying and they start telling you their life story. It happens. Not as much as I'd love it to happen. <laughs> and then you can share with them the Lord and what, what He's done with you. But I think it's going to be more prevalent as we learn to yield and allow, allow His Spirit to be. We want kingdom. We want how it is in heaven to be on earth. We want to go to the supermarket or the mall and express kingdom without even speaking. You don't have to. You yield to Christ in you and allow kingdom to flow, righteousness, peace, and joy out of your innermost being to flow to people that you're walking past and see what's going to happen. Because the power is coming. The power is here. We have to clean ourselves up. We've got to do those three things. We can't doubt. We've got to take care of some of the deep-rooted, nasty things that we got hid in our closets. And we gotta only believe. Like childlike faith. If you don't see your healing immediately, keep believing. You don't gotta you don't gotta take that as a oh, it's not working. God is always at work. There's something so exciting in this, and I want you to be able to get this. There's something so powerful and exciting. It's moving me beyond my compassion. Like, I have a real high compassion for folks. 
And I can feel, like I said, I can feel what's going on in them. And the Lord lets me see that stuff. And so that we could pray things through. It's so much more than just the compassion. There's power. There's power. You could wake up in the morning and have power. You don't need your coffee. I touched a sacred, sacred cow on that one. But before you have your coffee, ask this Holy Spirit, I need power for today. I, I allow you, I yield to you, Holy Spirit, that you would bring the, bring the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would show us kingdom in this time, that we would be able to express kingdom, that many would come to you, many would come to you, that we would just be able to believe as a child that you are who you said you are, that your promises are true. Hallelujah. We want to be able to walk in those darkest places, in those dark alleys, in those places that people would stay clear from and be able to bring your light and your presence to set the captives free. I just see bonds just falling off of people. I see chains just falling. He wants this. We need this. This is going to be a really dark time. We need to have the light, the contrast. He's raising up a standard. He's raising up an army. His power has got to break through. We know his love. We got to share it. He's been so kind and forgiving to us. Let's be forgiving. Let's walk in that. Let's release that. I want to see the power. I want to see the miracles. I want to see people getting saved because they have no idea what else to do. What can I do, they say. I hear these things. I'm hearing these things right now. What can I do? What can I do to be saved? We want to hear that when we walk past the people that are lost. We want to, we want to hear that when we're looking out the windows in the front when we're seeing people walking their dogs and their families are going past us, do we even know them? I beg you, please, no doubt, only believe and deal with some of your root issues, those things that are hidden, because they will hold you back and you don't want to miss this stuff that's coming. You don't want to miss this. Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com. Did you know that we have an online school available? Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Clark. We invite you to join our international community of almost a thousand students currently enrolled in a school like no other. Team Embassy equips believers to live in the Spirit by giving them the how-to tools for wholeness, intimacy with God, and living the abundant life Jesus promised us. You will learn how to heal emotional pain quickly and completely. You'll discover amazing keys to tap into the fruit of the Spirit and practice the presence of God as a lifestyle. Exciting courses available include the 60-day challenge, self-deliverance, healing rejection, codependency, intimate prayer, the functions of the human spirit, and many, many more. It's formatted so that you could take it with you on all your mobile devices. Sign up today at training.teamembassy.com. Be transformed. Become all God created you to be. 
you will never be the same.